What's up? This is Keith Kelfis. I hope you're doing well, my friend. It is about to break. What's that? Well, if you're in the Midwest, if you're anywhere that's not summer year round, it's about to be springtime, which means you're probably excited. You're getting ready. You're listening to Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> and you're getting ready to crush it, dog. In this video, I want to talk about something called creative destruction, which is uh, personal growth and development and frustration. <laughs> you can frustrate it, man. So uh, real quick, before I get started here, I have a couple notes. I want to say thank you. I really do. Thank you so much. The Untrapped Podcast, my podcast on any podcast platform, has hit number 35 in the nation in the category of entrepreneurship on Apple Podcasts. Um, no, no, all together. So, uh, you can check it out, man. There's some awesome episodes on there. They're being released weekly. You know, we're probably going to ramp it up to twice a week. Very excited about that. Thank you. And thank you for uh, my listeners, if, if that's you, for leaving a well-worded positive review. It means the world to me, and it really helps the podcast rankings. Number two is I want to say thank you so much that my videos on social media have now surpassed 20 million views online. Uh, phenomenal. I started my YouTube channel with no subscribers and I was super excited when I first hit 100 subscribers. It was the best feeling ever to me. Um, uh, it didn't come easy. It's a constant hustle and a grind and it's a lot of sacrifice to make a lot of content online, you know? And I also want to say thank you to my friends in this community that I admire and I respect so dearly uh, for all of your positive impact and influence and videos and groups and social media that we have a place to turn to when we need help. Uh, I'm very thankful. Number three is I want to say thank you that both of my uh, books have become other Amazon bestsellers. And... Uh, I, my third book is finished and it'll be released this spring pretty soon here. You'll be hearing more about that soon. Uh, we're just finishing up publishing right now. Uh, I've also been invited to be a keynote speaker. This is a dream come true to me. Um, and it doesn't come out come with a lot without a lot of sacrifice. Uh, but a keynote speaker, one of the industry's most important events. But I can't talk about it right now. Uh, but I want to talk about one thing. Uh, creative destruction. So there comes a point where you get so sick and tired of not being, doing, or having what you want in life or who you want to be that you start your personal development. Like you, you're frustrated and you feel like you're on a plateau, but you're actually growing. And it's like a gorilla in a cage that can no longer be contained by the space that confines it. And if you think about how a, a a butterfly, you know, a, a, a caterpillar in, a, in a, ca a cocoon grows into a butterfly. The cocoon doesn't just break apart. It's that the caterpillar is growing at a rate that it's actually breaking the cocoon apart. Hear what I'm saying? Like a gorilla in a cage is growing to the point where it stretches the cage and its arms and legs bust through. And next thing you know, it's wearing the cage like a t-shirt. <laughs> Imagine wearing a metal cage around you like a t-shirt. And then you get to the point where you just rip this thing off of you. You grow. And when you feel confined and frustrated, it's because you're growing, but you're not seeing your life around you change. That's where this anxiety comes from, is you have so much ambition and success inside of you 
that's breaking to new levels, yet it's not happening in your tangible physical life. You don't have anything to show for what's going on in your head. You could feel like you're, go you're going nuts. This is where um, um, you, know, you can freak out and start pacing around your house saying, I gotta get more money. I gotta do, I gotta. <laughs> and you start freaking out. I don't know if you've ever done that, <laughs> but um, it's very, it's counterproductive that type of behavior doesn't create results. And, you know, what I've learned is you can say everything on God's timing or integrate your successes and look at how far you've come. But even still, it feels like it's not happening fast enough. So here's my point, creative destruction. I really think you have to get to a point where you are willing to sacrifice and burn the comfortable things around you or the things that keep you safe in order to get to the next level. Um, basically drawing your line in the sand. You say, you know, that's it. I'm raising my prices and I don't care if everything falls apart and I lose XYZ client base. Um, now that's, that's kind of a negative way to look at it because this is just an example. If you wanted to raise prices on specific clients but you're afraid you're gonna lose them, maybe you could come at them uh, to them in a very professional way and negotiate charging them more. But ultimately you might lose them, right? I was on the phone with my buddy DJ uh, yesterday. He's done a lot of business. We just put out a podcast. It's a fire, bro. And he's saying there's only so much the market can bear. And if you put it on a graph, if you raise your prices too much, there's a drastic fall off. It falls off quick to where now you're literally, your closing rate gets so low that you're not getting any work. So what is, what is the highest level of positioning and perceived value you can make yourself in the most credible and to where other people are edifying you, you have the social proof, to where you can charge as high as possible and make that work so you can afford to hire people so you're not running around doing everything yourself. One struggle I have in my business is every time we get crazy busy in the summer, my books fall apart. It really looks like, you know, uh, I'm talking about uh, QuickBooks, right? So I'm hiring a bookkeeper to keep that 2020 is the year of impeccable finances, right? Of making sure everything is just impeccable financially all the time. And so I'm thinking about every minute that you spend not doing the most important things, which are things that are revenue generators, those are moments that now you might love what you do, right? Like, uh, I was on the phone with Brian, Brian's Lawn Maintenance just last night. We were talking until like midnight. We were on the phone for like 45 minutes and I'm very proud of him, man. This guy, he's got what, 83,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's launched Launchpreneur Academy. He's crushing it in his lawn care business. He just launched his podcast and now it's, it's doing very well. And um, I was like, are you cutting grass this year or are you gonna like delegate that? But where he's at in his business, he likes cutting grass. And I like doing at least some of the physical labor in my business because I can put on my headphones. I just got these, these are actually dope. Oh, sometimes it feels so good, you know, because at the end of the day, I like landscaping, dude. I actually like installing landscapes for people and cleaning windows and doing all that stuff just not 70 hours a week and what I like about it is because you get a great you're getting paid to work out and get a tan and to get educated in listening I just got this new book uh, there's a ton of books I can I got a whole video on all the books but you're getting paid to get work out get a tan and get an education and be your own boss it's it's a very interesting dynamic it's you know but um, 
I think that when you don't have the option and you're trapped doing what you're doing and you're not getting paid what you're worth and you don't see your life growing and your results aren't growing and you're stuck totally stagnant, which I can relate to, you can get very frustrated, right? Now, if you say do lawn care, I, I don't know, I haven't done lawn care in a long time. I replaced lawn care in my business with window cleaning. Um, I mean, can you really go up and tell your customers you have a $50 minimum to cut a lawn or whatever, a $35 minimum? Would you lose a bunch of clients? Like, let me know in the comments below how that works. I think with lawn, uh, lawn care, and I'm only thinking there's a very specific way that you have to do it to make it work to where it's profitable. And sometimes we get stuck in these paradigms where we're driving all the way across town to do something for a customer that we're at the end of the day, we're not making any money doing it. We're doing it because we have this relationship with the customer where we're afraid to let them go or we're telling ourselves a story in our head that maybe we'll get more over there and it'll eventually work, but it's not working fast enough. And we're stuck in all these little chasms where we're trying to close the gap all over the place and of things that will someday produce the revenue or someday make it work or someday this thing will work out. And the truth is, if you only have 24 hours in a day, what things do we have to creatively destroy and destruct and get rid of or say no to or price out of the market or raise our prices on in order to make the most vital things work? Because you can't be the chief cook and bottle washer, like the guy that's doing all the sales and all the marketing and doing the books and processing you know, the invoices and collecting the payments and doing the banking and cashing the checks and doing all the work and ordering the materials and doing the delivery and the cleanup and be you know a great husband and father or wife and and go to church every single Sunday and make sure you go to the gym three times a week and eat perfectly healthy and sleep exactly eight hours a night and wake up and do yoga and meditation and go jogging for an hour every single morning and all this crap that I hear that people do, it makes me angry. I would like to track down some of these guys that claim to do all this shit and literally just follow them around for like a week and see if they're telling the truth or if they're lying. Because I know I have entire days where I wake up burned out and I literally can't do anything productive. That entire day is me spent on a low vibration and anxiety and I can only just go through the motions to make it through that day. And I might last for two days and I just have to recuperate so I can get back on the grind and get really productive stuff done again. Look at this cool. It's an echo keychain. It's metal. It's a saw. It's pretty dope, right? And we got this. It's like a little echo chainsaw. Anyways, I want to upload a lot more videos to this channel in 2020. I'm excited. And the hard thing is actually editing all the videos. If I talk about, you know, 2020 is the year of impeccable bookkeeping, well, how am I going to do that and upload videos? That's why I'm saying hire a bookkeeper. And you might get angry. You say, well, how the hell am I going to do all these things if I don't have the money to do it? And I'll tell you one thing is the truth. The people who say that they're doing all these things, it's because they have the money to do it. Now they have the consciousness, and they're making the decisions, but they got the money to do it. If you don't have the money, you can't do shit. You can't do anything, and you will be trapped doing everything yourself. The only reason, you know, now sometimes getting so frustrated that you creatively destruct, which means you say, hey, I'm no longer doing this thing. If it falls apart, fine. I'm gonna hire someone to do that or have somebody, you know. Um, sometimes that might be the very thing that we need to free ourselves up 
to just make some more money. Because if you think about it, if you spend an hour a week doing something that doesn't make you any money, unless you like love doing it, you know, that's different. Like something that you're passionate about or a hobby that brings you sanity and joy, like playing the guitar. Like I think that's, that's what's very important to get that, or you'll go nuts, right? You become a miserable bastard. <laughs> um, but what if your time was worth, I don't know, let's say hundred bucks an hour. And now you spent that hour on the phone selling more stuff to customers or working on your marketing or, or advertising, your advertising, working on your selling skills or actually going out and making money, you know, selling things. And then, and then instead of you doing that one hour of unproductive things, like you could hire somebody for 15 bucks an hour to do that thing that you don't like doing or can't, or do, you know, and now you went out and made a hundred dollars in that same exact hour. You literally just made eighty-five dollars extra and furthered your career, even if you broke even. And I try to argue. Uh, I've argued with my wife about this before. I was like, uh, "We get really busy, and I order this thing called Freshly. They're like pre-made, like super healthy dinners that come. You just heat them up." She's like, are you kidding me? They're so expensive. I said, listen, the time it takes, and we have all our groceries delivered too. Everything gets delivered directly to the house. Like I don't go to the grocery store unless I absolutely want to and everything gets delivered. And I don't care that it costs an extra 12, 15 bucks to have this stuff delivered because I said, listen, if I go and I spend an hour walking around the grocery store and collecting all the items, then come home and get out the pots and pans and chop all the vegetables, which I love cooking and I cook all this stuff and I put it all together and then we, we eat the meal and it's this whole freaking process which is sitting at the dinner table and eating with your family is very important. That's like part of the fabric of a healthy family and a healthy psychology. But then you gotta take it all away and clean all the dishes and wipe down everything and put it all away. That's like two and a half hours. <coughs> Excuse me, I just inhaled my spit. It's like two and a half hours dedicated to eating, to eating. When you have something that's fast, you can literally just eat and throw whatever, you're done. Now you can be back to making $100 an hour. So if you do that three days a week, that's 300 more and, and you save an hour each day, times three is $300 a week. That's three, six, nine, that's $1,200 extra per month that you just made. Uh, and let's say you spend $200 a month having stuff delivered extra. So you made an extra $1,000 a month, providing that you spent that time doing something productive that makes you that $100 an hour or 50 or 30 bucks an hour, whatever it is for you, it's okay. But providing you spend that time doing something productive, instead of just laying around on your phone, you know, playing Candy Crush or whatever. I don't know. I don't play Candy Crush. But... Then you literally just made an extra thousand dollars. So this is a totally different mindset. The employee broke, you know, victim mindset says save every penny and do everything yourself. But the next level is how can I spend more money to buy myself more time to do things that create even more money? And then that's how you learn delegation. You go, oh my God, delegation, right? Now the thing that's held me up in my service business from doing this and growing an entire business is what you might be able to relate to is the man hour rate and the competition. Uh, and I keep, I've been going back and forth this in my head to the point of total frustration for years now. I don't see where the money's at to be able to afford to grow the infrastructure of these big companies. I, like to me, the profit margin seems way too thin and your ass on the line and liability all over the place. Like having a bunch of knuckleheads driving around in your trucks, pulling equipment, texting and driving. Like I have all these weird associated fears with stuff like that. 
And until the way, until I can see it from a way that relieves me from all liability, where I can feel totally safe with a whole bunch of people working for me and out doing work and, and have all the systems and protocols and everything in place where I'm not like, and, and it's actually very, very, because I think if, if you're going to grow a business to where you have that much liability out there on the on the streets and on people's properties you better be getting paid handsomely so much money or, or, or very quickly get to the point where you're making so much money that not only can you afford to have a beautiful life you can have the best health insurance you can have money socked away you can have money in stocks and bonds and mutual funds and an IRA you can have money being put away for emergency a slush fund emergency and a slush fund and you're putting money specifically away for legal, in case something happens and you, you know, get a lawsuit or something like that, like, and you have this big company, you're putting the money away specifically just for legal stuff. So it's not a surprise you're anticipating it. Like you look at companies that have huge profit margins, like Amazon and Apple, you know. So if there's anybody in this industry that's making that type of profit margin, where you feel totally safe doing that, let me know. I actually made a video before this that I'm like, I can't upload that. And I pressed reset and this is the new video where I was literally like cussing and ranting and yelling. I'm like, I can't put that on YouTube. It's walk a mile, see a mile. I really think that is the answer. But uh, for this year, the prices are getting raised again. The sales pitch is getting refined. Uh, we have a calling center. So the, when the phone rings, it goes to the calling center. They have scripts. And uh, we're going to do more marketing and advertising because the prices are going up. Because I cannot afford to do everything myself. What is this? The phone's ringing. Hello, this is Keith. We looked through our records and noticed you submitted a request in the past for uh, some information regarding a more affordable health insurance policy. This is a follow-up. Are you a robot? On the call to discuss some options. Anyways, my friend. Here's what I want. I need to manifest this. I want to see graphs and charts of all different businesses and I want to see how much, what's their sales, what's the profit margin, how much does it cost for their employees and their management and their infrastructure at each different level, you know, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, 500 million, 2 million, 5 million. What, what, what do the profit margins look like and what does that business look like at that level? What are the responsibilities of the owner and the CFO? Who did he have to hire? What did he have to go through? Like the whole thing. So, you, so, so I understand wh where do you need to be so you don't get trapped, so you don't get stuck. You know, there's a different plateau. Like some, some guys get stuck at 50 grand. They don't know how to make any more than 50 grand in revenue. Some guys get stuck at 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. Some people get stuck, you know, right at that $350,000 mark and they just can't get through it because they don't have enough money and leadership and systems and infrastructure to go to the next level. They've gone deep. And they're, you know, and they're working their asses off, but they don't, they can't go wider now. There's just not enough money to support that. Where can I get access to that information? Because I've read 470 books and maybe Good to Great by Jim Collins. I need to look deeper into that book. Last night. I was listening to um, some training, and my wife was like, how much more shit do you have to listen to, Keith? You already know everything. Why don't you just do it? I'm like, I am doing it. I'm working 10, 11 hours a day, sometimes 12, 14 hours a day, but then I burn out. Um, I mean, I literally, 
I just finished a book and I'm three quarters of the way through my next book and that's in publishing. I have seven virtual assistants, five of them working uh, in my internet business where I have n nine YouTube channels, well five of them that are active and I'm putting out at least five videos, not just on this channel, but five videos a week. We're putting out a 2,000 word blog post article every week. We're putting out a podcast every single week. We're posting 24 pieces of content on average per day on social media. I mean, literally my thumbs can barely even move. I have three cell phones. One of them is a, com is, is a social media phone. And uh, we have, uh, sponsorships and debt brand deals that we're curating. I have a, a virtual assistant in Texas, which is dude, like, it's it's nonstop all day. I'm doing as much as I possibly physically can every single second of every single day. And in between, I'm I'm straight up meditating and I'm praying to Jesus. And we're going to church on Sundays when we're not when we're in town. And then like I'm falling asleep to, to wealth training and productivity hypnosis programs and I'm like showering as quick as I can and brushing my teeth and I'm literally trying as hard as I can every single second of every single day. And I'm realizing that the reason I'm frustrated is because what's gonna get me to the next level, the only thing stopping me now is leadership, money, I could say just balls, creative destruction. I need to make more money. So what do I tell you? Um, I don't know. It really is amazing to me. I know some people, I won't say their names because of the way I'm talking about it. They. It's almost like everything they touch turns to gold. Like I was just, they weren't just, you know, st stumbling through the woods. And they just touch this thing and it turns to gold. <laughs> but it seems to me that, do you know anybody like that? They're just like, they make so much money. And it might be that they're just capitalizing on opportunities and positioning themselves in a way that makes a lot of money. If you become a master at doing generic things, you are still only a master of doing generic things. You're not a, a master of doing a specialized thing. Moving upstream. Moving upstream. That's what's coming to me right now. In order to move upstream, you have to look at the 80-20 rule. And I've already done this. I've done this. I've done this for sure. But now it's time to do it again and again and again. So you take, look at the bottom 80%. Oh, so the 80-20 rule says that 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. Or 80% of your income comes from the 20% of your clientele in a 20% location. Whatever it is. Now, you can dissolve the bottom 20% of your entire clientele and raise your prices. Uh, but this is saying dissolve the bottom 80% and only focus on the top 20% of highest producing things. This seems so true to me, but sometimes it feels like bullshit. Because you know as well as I know that all of the bottom 80% of the things that you're doing are the bread and butter that pay your bills, especially if you have a service business. If you, stop, if you start saying no to all the little jobs, now let me know if I'm wrong, but if you start saying no to all the little jobs and all the, 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 the ones that, the, that, that fill in all the gaps, that's all the bread and butter money that keeps you busy, that keeps all the bills paid. And it seems to me the 20% is the, you know, the 20% of the, the jackpot jobs are the really good stuff that rolls in. And that's the stuff that fills up the coffers. That's the stuff that gets you ahead. It allows you to reinvest or gives you vacation money or allows you to pay off a whole insurance policy faster. I know that's in my business. I got all the bread and butter jobs. And then we have our tw top 20% jackpot jobs that allow me to, last year I paid off the whole year's insurance policy six months early within six or seven months into the year, the whole thing was paid off because I got some good jackpot jobs and I just, you know, and then more jackpot jobs, sock it all the way in the tax account, you know, get all that stuff taken care of early. 
by, by hustling and grinding. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. It's been a long video. Peace.